Hello and welcome to Dax for Humans. My name is Greg Deckler, and if you've been following this channel, we have spent the last few episodes demonstrating how our Dax pattern to solve most problems can solve a variety of common calculations, including looking up values, running totals, and calculations that deal with previous rows. In the next few episodes, we are going to switch gears and introduce a few more DAX functions that will allow us to add horsepower to our DAX pattern so that we can create even more advanced calculations using that same pattern. In this episode, we are going to take a look at grouping rows. Now, as you can see, we have our original table on the left and a summarized table on the right. The default behavior of visuals in DAX is to summarize or aggregate information. When putting a numeric column in a table visual, the column is generally summed. Now, we can control this default aggregation by clicking on the column, and then the column tools tab in the summarization, we can control whether the default aggregation is sum, average, minimum, maximum, count, or distinct count. We can also override that default aggregation by clicking on this chevron icon in the visualizations pane, and here we have those same exact aggregation options, but we also add standard deviation, variance, and median. But we can also emulate the same kind of summarization in DAX using a few different functions. The functions we'll be looking at today are summarize and group by. So here again, here's our default unsummarized table. Now we have this summarize table, which looks very similar to our table visualization, and it should. And we're using the summarize function. And here we're telling the summarize function, I want to summarize our table. And then we want to summarize by the item column. And then we want to create a column called total cost, which sums our total cost column. So here we get pickle 23.94, banana 23.92, and grapefruit 14.97, which mirrors our pickle 23.94, our banana 23.92, and our grapefruit 14.97. Now we can also use the group by function, and it's very similar. We say group by, we tell it which table we want to group the rows, we tell it the column we want to group on, and again we use total cost to create a total cost column. And then in this case we need to use an x aggregator function. So in this case I'm using sum x, and we have to use this special function that's only used with the group by function called current group. So we tell sum x we want to summarize the current group and we want to sum up the total cost column. Again, we get the exact same results. Now, you can also group by multiple columns, as we see here, I'm grouping by item and by price, and then I can also create multiple aggregate columns. So in this case, I've got an average quantity where I'm averaging the quantity, and I've got a max date where I grab the max date, and then my total cost where I sum the total cost column. And you can see here for banana, I get an average quantity of four. For pickle, I get an average quantity of three. And grapefruit, an average quantity of three. My max date in terms of banana is 111. For pickle, it's 110. And for grapefruit, it's 114. And that corresponds again to, since our banana, we have a three and a five, the average is four. Our grapefruit is three. We only have one row, so its average is three. For pickle, we have two and four. Our average is three. And again, here we have a banana, our max date is January 11th, January 14th for grapefruit, and January 10th for pickle. That's all for this video. Hope to see you next time.